As a teacher, when given the hypothetical situation of a student who's dealing with stress, or withdrawing from things, or maybe having trouble with social situations, it can be easy enough to say that you'd help and support them with inspirational teaching. It can be much harder to figure out exactly how you'd do that. It's even harder when you consider that out of the 200 students you teach each week, 100 of them might be having trouble with a subject, 50 of them may be feeling sad or anxious about other issues in their life, and 10 of them may be struggling with more serious mental health issues. And there seems to be no rhyme or reason to who's in each category. What do you do then? Many people get caught in a cycle of sadness, worry and insecurity. And for many young people, in fact three in five teenagers, this is something that follows them constantly in their day-to-day -day life. For some, these feelings are related to something that's happened in their life exam stress, family conflict, or friendship hassles. For others, it may be because they're experiencing depression or anxiety. Depression is when feelings of sadness last longer than normal, affect most parts of your life, and stop you from enjoying the things you usually would, not just when you've had a couple of bad weeks. Anxiety refers to a feeling of fear, apprehension, or worry. Anxiety is a normal emotion, in fact it's a very important one, but when someone becomes too anxious, when it gets in the way of things you want to do, or takes over your thoughts, it could be an anxiety disorder. Anxiety can really impact how you live your life, your work, your study, and your relationships with family and friends. But far too many adolescents and the people around them aren't aware of what anxiety looks like, or what they can do about it. Anxiety can be managed, as long as you know enough about it. Some things you can do for yourself, but sometimes it's useful to get help from others. Young people often ask themselves, are these feelings a sign that I need extra help, or are they just part of the normal feelings that people go through during a difficult time? A lot of this can be down to a lack of understanding or knowledge about what they're going through. And that's why it's important for you, as a teacher, to be on the lookout for signs of anxiety and help students out where you can. But that can be really hard. This is Laura an adolescent who's feeling anxious. I'm always worrying about stuff. My friends have always called me a worrywart. I think if something can go wrong, it will. Are my family okay? Why are my friends late? Don't they like me anymore? Is my homework correct? I only checked it three times. I think about the bad things that have happened in the past as well as the ones that will happen in the future. Sometimes my worries stop me from getting to sleep for hours. It seems to me that I've always been this way. But worrying takes up so much time and energy. I even worry that I worry too much. Now this obviously isn't the way that everyone with anxiety feels, but it is one case, and what you may notice about a lot of these thoughts is that they're internal. Without talking to Laura and getting to know her, you may never notice these symptoms. There are some things that you can try and look for. One of these is not being able to function in usual roles. What this means is that anxiety may prevent someone from taking part in family life, school life, in friendships or in hobbies and activities in the ways that they usually do. Another is getting really down on yourself, feeling very critical or feeling like the future is bleak. Some symptoms that are specifically associated with anxiety are worrying. Worrying all the time and worrying about a wide range of things. Another sign is avoiding things. Avoiding things because you're too afraid to try them or too afraid to do them. And a third sign of anxiety is if someone is experiencing panic attacks. Panic attacks are sudden onsets of anxiety that are normally accompanied by physical symptoms such as shaking, trouble breathing, or a dramatically increased heart rate. Like I said earlier, you can't simply solve everyone's problems with the sheer power of teaching. That doesn't mean you should ignore them all either. As an individual staff member, there are a few main ways that you can help students who are experiencing mental health difficulties. You can pay attention. In school, you're in a great position to observe students over time and notice emerging difficulties, although not all students may display observable changes. You can have regular, open-ended conversations where students can talk without you needing to solve anything. They'll get to know that you're prepared to listen and may be able to explain what's going on with them in the future. You can also use these talks to suggest and teach self-help strategies. Encourage students to stay active and involved in the hobbies and activities that they normally do. Talk to them regularly about strategies to deal with stress. And make sure that your students have someone to talk to, whether it's yourself, 
another teacher, family, friends or services. Just speaking to someone can be really helpful for someone who's having trouble. Finally, you can get other people involved by talking to your colleagues or referring the student for more support. Get good quality information and help your student find out more about what's going on with them through research and pamphlets that your school may have on hand. There are also a variety of organisations that can help you find out more and get access to good services. Many schools also have social and emotional learning and wellbeing programs in place. These are focused on teaching students how to recognise the symptoms of anxiety in themselves and others and teaching them strategies for how to deal with stress. If things are a little more serious, you might want to suggest that the student talks to a professional and gets some counselling, either through the school or through outside services. Of course, all this needs to be done within the context of policies and procedures that your school may need you to follow, but in principle these steps are simple, flexible and achievable. Life can be busy and challenging for adolescents, working out who they are, where they want to go and how they're going to get there. If anxiety and mental health issues begin to get in the way, there are things you can do to help your students get back on track. Remember, you're not a mental health professional, but as an adult, an educator and a human being, there are things you can do to help. Getting help and support can improve how students think about day-to-day -day things, give them strategies to overcome challenges, and help them be more optimistic about the future. Your attention, conversation and empathy could be exactly the thing a struggling student needs.